This is the Smart Poker Study Podcast for players who are always striving to be better today than they were yesterday. Through strategy discussions, Q&As, and Poker Pro interviews, we'll dive deep into everything related to poker tactics, study techniques, and the mental side of the game. All in an effort to improve your skills, maximize your profits, and to make you a lifelong successful player. This podcast is brought to you by SmartPokerStudy.com, and I'm your host, Sky Matsuhashi. Poker people, yesterday's episode number 10 was a Q&A where I helped one of you get to sleep better at night and to deal with some of those mental game issues of tilt. Hey, poker people, it's day five in my 30-day challenge to release a new podcast every day. I'm one-sixth of the way there, and of course, that's 17% for you mathy geeks out there like me. And speaking of me, you know, my name is Sky Matsuhashi, and you can imagine as I was growing up, I got a ton of fun poked at me for my name. Sky, pie sky, sky high, sky is so high, high in the sky. You know, there's so many ways to rhyme my name Sky, and my last name Matsuhashi I got a ton of flack for that too. Matsubashi, Matsuwashi, Mitsubishi, Mitsufushi, Matsuglashi. I mean, everybody said anything to just make fun of my name. You know, it, it made me think like, why can't they be Chuck Norris? You know, nobody makes fun of Chuck Norris. I mean, what rhymes with Chuck? Nothing really, you know? And a name like Arnold Schwarzenegger? There's no way anybody can ever make fun of Arnold Schwarzenegger's name. I mean, man, I, my parents gave me Sky Matsuhashi. But, you know, I'm happy with it now. So let's go on. Today's episode is all about using poker game tape to improve your play. So for an overview on today's episode, I'll begin by going over what game tape is and the reasons to use it, which are namely leak detecting, mistake catching, concentration slipping, tilt preventing, and opponent dissection. Yes, you heard that right, dissection. Let's be surgeons, yo! Then I'll cover some logistics on how to do it for yourself. I'll conclude with a challenge, and of course, you guessed it, the challenge is recording your own game tape. And everything I discuss here will be in the show notes for this episode, which you can find and follow along at smartpokerstudy.com slash 11. Now here it is, today's podcast mission. My mission is to get you to use game tape for the first time tonight to record part of your session for a review tomorrow. So a question you might be asking me right now is, Sky, what is game tape and why should I frickin' use it? Well, game tape is recording yourself perform so you can analyze it uh, and improve your performance later on. People in all walks of life watch themselves at work to improve their skill sets, like football players, you know, any other sports players, of course. Presentation speakers, stand-up comedians, and actors are just a few of them. They're looking for mistakes made by themselves or their opponents, uh, technical or message issues, and fan or audience reactions. You know, they are looking for areas of improvement, so their next outing is even better than this one. As a poker player, you can do the exact same thing. With so many immediate decisions to be made at the tables, it's really easy to see how we can make the occasional idiotic play or get lost midway through a hand or miss the little things that can add up to a lot of extra profit. Game tape forces you to be more honest in your assessment of your poker play and skills. When you actually watch yourself play, you'll be privy to all of the poker leaks and you can now make plans to address them in future sessions. And it allows you to see your play in context, not really in the bubble of just one table at a time during a standard hand history review. You know, when you do a hand history review, you're looking at just the one table, but maybe you didn't realize that you were busy on two other tables at the same time, and that's why you made the mistake on this one table. So game tape allows you to see your whole session in context, and you can catch the things that you're likely missing because you're concentrated on other tables or other hands at the same time. You'll see where you're concentration starts to lag and you know what causes you or where you start to become kind of a robotic button clicker you know when i first started or first had the idea to do uh, my own game tape it's when i was reviewing a hand one day and out of nowhere it was the craziest thing i saw myself fold aces to a raise pre-flop i was what the you know it was a 10 nl game uh, five cent ten cent and out of nowhere i was it looked like doing the hand history review it looked like i was playing just fine and you know one hand after another things are going fine and then all of a sudden i get dealt aces in the cutoff and 
might have been under the gun or maybe middle position. One of them opened for a standard raise, and I just folded. It blew my mind, and I thought to myself, what the heck was happening at the time to make me fold aces or to miss the aces hand? It really bummed me out, and then I realized that, you know, I don't know what happened, but I would be able to see what happened if I actually had game tape of my whole session. And then so from that moment on, I just started recording game tape. I don't record all of the time, but I use it occasionally, uh, a couple times a week. And the reason why, well, there's a few areas that game tape can really help you to improve. One of those areas is just basic leak detecting. You know, when I was watching my game tape, I realized that I had some bet sizing leaks. I would make it 2.5 BBs. This was when I was playing tournaments. So at standard levels, not short stacked or anything, but I would be opening to 2.5 BBs for value, but I would notice that I was opening to 2.2 BBs as semi bluffs or, you know, with like suited connectors and speculative hands. So, I finally realized that, and I'd been playing like this for months, and who knows if opponents picked up on it or not, but I noticed it through the game tape, and that was something I put a stop to right away, and I started to standardize my opens based on, uh, you know, basically based on the level that we were at, 50, 100, 100, 200, and kind of chip stacks, but yeah, that was a leak that I detected because of game tape. Another way game tape helps me work on my game is it allows me to catch those simple little mistakes, you know. Oftentimes you miss obvious steal spots or obvious three bet re-steal spots or any other thing, you know, C bet spots or whatever. You miss them because you're focused on another table at the same time that is so important. Well, when you start catching these small mistakes, you just realize that that's a mistake that you got to fix. So if you realize that that's the first step to correcting it, so the next session that you'll play, you'll be a little bit more mm, knowledgeable or pay attention a little bit more to that mistake, and it won't happen as much because you'll be looking for it. Another way that game tape helps me is... I can catch myself when my concentration stops slipping. As I record game tape, I'm talking through all of my decisions. So as I'm watching it the next day, I'm listening to myself speak. Well, there are times when I suddenly stop talking through decisions and... I can see my mouse moving across the screen and it's seemingly like random mouse movements and button clicking. It seems like I don't know what I'm doing, like I'm just playing robotically and not paying attention. So watching the game tape helps me kind of realize, hey, when this situation happened, I started to lose concentration. It started to slip and I started to make a mistake. So that's another way that game tape helps. And of course, game tape really helps with tilt prevention. You know, so sometimes watching myself play, I get sucked out on, I lose with pocket kings to a queen nine suited, whatever the case is. I can hear myself and see myself suddenly shut up. Or I even hear myself say something to the computer screen like, fuck you! Fuck you, asshole. You know, sorry, Arnold. I know I made fun of your name earlier. I apologize. I won't do that again. Yeah, so when I notice myself yelling at the screen, yelling at my opponents, or even just climbing up and not saying anything, I know that I'm tilting, and that allows me to kind of analyze why I started to tilt, and hopefully I'll be able to make adjustments for that in the future and get past the tilt. And another way that game tape really does help is through opponent dissection. As I'm playing, I'm concentrated on my hands so much, I miss a lot of the mistakes that my opponents are making, things that I can capitalize on in the future. So through game tape, I can watch a certain opponent. While I was playing, I might have been concentrated on another table, but I can actually watch another opponent play and see maybe timing tells or bet sizing issues, see how they treated hands, see what the showdown hand was. And with my poker tracking software, I can take notes on what I saw that I can use in future sessions. All right, so just to recap the areas that uh, game tape has helped me improve my game, it's through leak detecting, mistake catching, concentration slipping or noticing the concentration slipping, tilt preventing, and opponent dissection. So let's get into the logistics of game tape. I have for you five steps to using game tape. Number one. Set up and test a screen capture program. So the very first step is just getting a screen capture program. If you don't already have one, just Google it and a million different ones will pop up. I recommend Bandicam as it's the easiest to set up and start recording right out of the box. You can even record 10 minutes at a time for free and there's a link in the show notes for this page to take you directly to the Bandicam site so you can download it. 
And while you're online, get a good set of headphones with a mic to record your thought process as you play. Logitech sells a really good, very simple player called the Clear Chat Comfort Headset. Uh, it's only for 28 bucks at Amazon, and you can get it quickly via Amazon Prime, you know. So there's another link for that within the show notes. I recommend you pick one up. But if your computer has a built-in mic, you could just use it for now until you decide you want some better quality sound. So once you get a microphone and have the program downloaded, run a simple test before you start your session. Play back the video. Can you hear yourself? Is the video quality good? You won't rewatch a video if the quality is poor or you can't hear yourself. So make sure uh, the quality is there. Number two. Record a session. So just record your very next session, maybe anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Make sure you're speaking your thoughts out loud as you play. In the beginning, you'll find yourself quite often just shutting up while you work out a hand in your head. Just keep practicing. Playing and speaking your thoughts is just another muscle to develop, and with time, you'll be speaking for a full 30 minutes or longer with ease. Jason Somerville didn't become the broadcaster that he is just overnight. He practiced and practiced through his Twitch streams, and you could do the same thing by recording the game tape. And talking through your plays really helps to work out your thoughts and come to the right decisions. Turn the recorder off or just set the record link to 30 minutes and finish out your session normally. So just record for a time. Don't feel that you have to record the whole thing or watch the whole thing afterwards, especially if it's the first few times that, uh, that you're doing it. Number three. For the first review, focus on your play. So at a later date, not directly after your session, as really it is still too fresh in your mind. I want you to watch your game tape with a Word document open and your focus to be on your play. Take detailed notes on the five issues already mentioned. Once again, those are leak detecting, mistake catching, concentration slipping, tilt preventing, and opponent dissection. And when you're taking notes, one thing that I always do is I record the mistake, whatever it is. For example, I didn't see bet versus an out of position opponent with a 75% uh, fold to see bet. So that's a note that I would make right there. That's something I need to look for. But I often use exclamation marks when a mistake gets repeated. So if I had that same note along with two exclamation marks after it, it means I made the mistake three times. You know, once for the mistake, uh, just writing out the mistake and two more times for the two extra exclamation points. So your notes are just things to look out for the next time you play, or they're things that you need to spend time studying on uh, in future study sessions. So taking notes does you no good if you don't pursue them. So make sure you follow up on every note made. And pay attention to the thought process that you're speaking aloud in the video. It's possible that you're obviously thinking through decisions that you're making. You might hear yourself say something like, This guy's opening 35% and his fold to 3-bet is 78%. I can 3-bet steal here with any two cards. And then, you know, you're watching the video, you see yourself do that, and it's successful. Great! You obviously thought through your play, you were speaking it out loud, and you went on your read, did it, and you succeeded. That's awesome. But there are times that you aren't speaking at all and you're still making plays. This could be a sign that your concentration is slipping and you're not fully thinking through your actions. Number four. Do a second review while focusing on your opponents. There is so much to learn from your game tape and your opponent's play is one of those things. If you have your tables tiled, then you can focus on your opponents and just watch how they play, looking for what hands they show down, bet sizing tells, timing tells, and other indications of weakness. You can focus on the fish at the tables, the donks, the nits, or the regs. That's totally up to you. Learn the weaknesses of the fish and the donks, and then probably learn from the skills of the regs. Number five. Prepare for your next session. So taking notes from the two or more review sessions that you did, you'll make a plan as to how you'll implement any changes or to do further study on your mistakes. Whether you make any changes in your next focus session or volume session, you need to at least put the notes into your warm-up so that they'll be top of mind as you play. So just to recap, the five steps, the five logistics to using game tape. Step one was set up and test a screen capture program. Step two was just record the session. Step three, as a first review, focus on your play. Step four was as a second review, focus on your opponents. And step five is take all those notes and prepare for your next session. And I recommend recording at least 30 minutes of a session one or two times a week. And I would normally just do game tape 
uh, for volume sessions, as discussed in Episode 9. So good luck, and please let me know how you like recording and watching your own game tape. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Record your first session tonight. Download Bandicam and just fire it up. Record tonight, watch tomorrow, and learn from it. And please share with me via Dropbox or YouTube. You can just email a link, and I'll be sure to watch and comment on it. We're friends, and you can trust me to give you good advice, right? Fuck you, asshole. Dude, don't be a jerk. Listen to me very carefully. Fuck you, asshole. Are you freaking kidding me, Arnold? Chill out. Dickwad. Oh, well, sorry, Arnold. I I understand. Uh, Let me get back to the listeners here. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Oh, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody. Go out of book. Alrighty, so to recap today's episode, we discussed game tape and how it can address all sorts of problems in your game, from leak detecting, mistake catching, concentration slipping, tilt preventing, and opponent dissection. I also discussed how easy it is to record your play and told you how to get the most from your game tape. Then I had some help with my buddy Arnold here. I'm the famous comedian Arnold Braunschweiger. Hmm, I'll just ignore that for now. And we issued you a challenge. Please go to the show notes at smartpokerstudy.com slash 11 for links to everything mentioned here. Thank you so much for listening today. Send me your constructive feedback through the show notes page at smartpokerstudy.com slash 11. You can also send an email to sky at smartpokerstudy.com, tweet me at smartpokerstudy, or post in the Facebook group at smartpokerstudy.com slash discuss. And I need your questions for the Friday Q&A episodes. Please send them to me through all the channels just mentioned. Plus, if you've got an idea for a podcast topic you'd like me to discuss, some issue that you're having, I'd love to hear that as well. And we have an iTunes review from Sunshine Star. Uh, He says, if you're a serious poker player, or if you just want to impress your friends, you really have to check out this show. Really entertaining and enjoyable. Well, thank you very much, Sunshine Star. Sunshine Star. Sunshine Star. Tough for me to say. Uh, Well, thank you. I really appreciate you giving me that sweet, sweet review. So please, everybody, subscribe to the Smart Poker Study podcast through your favorite podcast app. Give it a heart, a thumb, some stars, whatever, and leave a review to help others discover the show. Alrighty, poker people, be sure to listen to tomorrow's episode number 12, where I'll discuss the four common player types and how to exploit each of them. Word of mouth is the best advertising, and a recommendation from you to your friends would be most appreciated. If you enjoyed our time together and learned a little something, please share it with a friend. All right, Arnold, I think our podcast is over. What are we going to do now? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and they hear the lamentation of the women. Oh, I'm down for that. Until next time, study smart, play hard, and make your next session the best one yet. I want a lot of help, I want the world to-